Hey everyone, welcome to Patchwork Plus, and this is Ruler of the Month Club, and we're still in Club 6, and I'm Paula Caldwell. Glad to have you with me today. So today we're going to meet uh, Twirly, and this is actually the last uh, template in this series of Club 6. So Twirly, we're going to find out as you look at your package that you would have received four ideas of what we can do with Twirly, and then your handout sheet showed you a few more things you could do with him. So we're going to explore that first on paper, and then we'll go to the machine and have some fun stitching these designs out, and I'll be curious to see what designs you can come up with. So come closer and let's take a look. So as you can see, Twirly has this nice, almost like a question mark shape. Um, but the neat thing about Twirly is uh, you can see these lines. So there's one line that goes right through the midline. And if you were to line this registration line up, like with your seam or with your own uh, line that you've marked on your fabric, then this line is perpendicular going right through the middle. This one goes, actually goes to off to the side. This one goes through the middle and then this one goes to the left side. So depending on what angle you're choosing, um, you can get different slants and different uh, configurations with this little guy. So today we're going to look at a little spinning twirl. Uh, this is a six point using a six point grid. This is a 12 point. This is using um, part of the template, not all of it, to make these little hearts. And you remember Curvy? He was our first friend in this uh, ruler of the month club. We're going to use him to get these little shapes and then putting them around the outside of a circle. And then your handout get, also gave you some ideas. Uh, so we're gonna explore those. This one's really kind of different, kind of looks like flames, or you could use it in um, other ways um, if you're into different types of designs. So I almost didn't show you this one, but first let's look at this. So here's your six point grid. And if you remember, um, if you've been with us before, I mentioned that I'm doing something a little new. I'm writing down the name of my template and then drawing it out using my quarter inch roll along. And then I measure. So I get a sense of what I have to work with and how it's gonna fit in the spaces that I'm working with. So this is gonna be four inches. If we draw the hole from the baseline all the way up, that is four inches tall. And at the widest point, it's two inches. So that, that's helpful information. Now, if you switch it, of course, or tilt it on an axis, those numbers stay the same, but they're gonna be slightly different. So over here, we have the six point, and this is simply drawing your six point grid and then lining up your template. So I've got this midline, that's the line that's running down the middle lining up with my grid and stitch that out and then turn it line it up again stitch it out and all the way around so that gives you a twirl and they're non-touching there's a space there in between if you were to add another set of six lines on your grid then you have a 12 point grid um, and we're going to look at some different options you can see so this this is the same as the one we just stitched out on the six or drew out on the six point and when you rotate it now, because there are 12 lines, you can get this nice little overlap. So that creates another design, a secondary design. If instead of doing the complete twirl, you were to come back this way, and again, I'm using that middle registration line, but this time when I stitch, I'm gonna stop. Instead of creating this space over here, I'm gonna stop there and come back and then rotate it and again use that middle stop and come back. The difference on this side is it's the same idea, only this time instead of using the middle registration, I have used that one to the far right. So it just closes it a little bit more. You don't have quite as much um, fullness there. And then this one then again using the latter one. So you just play with those registration lines and see uh, what kind of different designs you can get. This is the heart and I was not gonna show you this, but in, in the sense of full disclosure and transparency, you can see that I got this one way off to an angle 
and then this one is more upright. So I learned a lot by doing that, and I'm going to share with you what works now for me as I try to create this design. This is using the full template, and this is using part of the template. So instead of tracing the whole thing out, I'm stopping, and I'm using this line where it comes into the center as my begin and end. So as I continue to play with that, that's not blood, that's fingernail polish. <laughs> no, I don't wear fingernail polish, but I put fingernail polish on all my templates so I can recognize it, and somehow I got it on my paper. So what I do now is what I realize what works best for me is to draw this vertical axis. And so when I'm lining this up and I'm using this first line, now I can see where my quarter inch is. When, when my needle goes around, where my quarter inch is going to hit. And it's going to hit right there. All right. And then we're going to turn it this way and do the same. Start and start. And I can see my quarter inch is going to be there. Then you have to flip it over. And that's something we always say, be careful that you can read the, the language on the front. But now we have to flip it over. And um, the because we're just really looking at registration lines, it's not too distorted, but they are a little bit distorted. So again, this quarter inch really helps me. And I can see if those are lining up about the same and then turn it around and do the other. And if you travel over, then you create this nice space that then you can go back and use. Remember curvy, we can put a little a curve in there and bring them down. So different ideas. Um, this is simply just using part of the template instead of going all the way down the stem, start and stop, and you can pick and choose where that is. Um, I simply used these lines as my stop and start. You could even come down here, but put a little piece of painter's tape, make it a little bit longer, a little bit bigger. Um, playing around with borders. Now, how could it be used in a border? Um, two curves can kind of kiss each other, uh, or you could do it end to end, like so. So a lot of possibilities. Um, here I'm just playing around with trying to extend it. Um, you could even come up with a way to fill space and then go back in and do some feathering or some leafy vines or um, a way to fill up, up your space. So we've got a lot to play with, um, some ideas to stitch out. So let's head over to the machine. Okay, ready to start stitching out. Just a couple of reminders. So on my machine, I have my um, ruler foot. Uh, if you have a Bernina, it's called ruler foot, and perhaps on others as well, other models as well. So make sure you have that because it does have that higher profile and it makes for not only safe stitching, but also a more accurate stitching. Uh, the other thing is I have my steady, so steady table. So if you need a nice firm surface uh, to work with. So you wanna remember those things as you start to stitch. Okay, so let's come closer and we're gonna, this is the six point um, circle that we were talking about. So as a reminder, a lot of times we're moving around the outside or the inside of a template, but this one we're gonna travel inside. So we've got to get it inside, um, get our foot inside this little track here. So first thing I'm gonna do is needle down, needle up, and bring up that bobbin thread. Okay, and I'm going to take a few securing stitches. Then I'm going to put my needle back down. And the other thing I need to do is um, keep my needle down. And I'm trying to remember now how to do that on this machine. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to put my needle down and then I'm going to put this in. Now, it fits snugly. So what I've been doing so that I don't hit the acrylic is lining up. You've got this little notch here in the center and your registration line here. So when I line those up, I can pretty much see that I'm going to go right down in that track. And there it is. So then you can easily rotate the ruler where you want it. So you can barely see this line. I'm going to line up this middle registration line right there, and then hug. What I have found is there's a little bit of play. So I'm hugging the inside of the template as I work my way around. Just 
adjust my hands. And that's the benefit of keeping your machine in the needle down position. So if you do need to adjust your hands, the needle is down and nothing moves. Okay, so it moved a little bit. And then come back around. And part of the problem is I've got drag back here. So I need to pull my fabric up. And around we go. Oops. And then we're going to come back. All right, let me get things lined back up. So it is an in and out. So you will have backtracking. And that can easily become part of your design, that bolder, bolder piece of thread. So you just rotate and keep going around. You can then even start playing with what would happen if you use this registration line or rotate it back this way. So it's going to angle it just slightly different. Uh, as And so you would want to keep them the same. Um, so that one's pretty. Let's try one more. Let's see if I can do a better job this time. Hugging that line. Keeping my template. And everything is one. And whenever you're going around curves, you're just kind of putting a little pressure to stay right up against the edge. Okay, position my hand again. And there's uh, nothing to say you have to go all the way around. You could stop right here and just kind of create a curve without it curling in on itself. those threads. So, fun design. This is the one where we were making swirls. Stitch this out. A couple of securing stitches. And then raise your presser foot and insert. And then I'm going to line up the midline again. Put down. And now we're set. So now I'm going to turn it so that I'm lining that up. And it should intersect and make this nice little loop. some pressure as you move around just hold steady not pressing hard but firmly slow and sure wins the race Max 
actually doing this on purpose, believe it or not. If you shift your ruler just slightly, your stitching can go just on the other side of your line if you don't want that heavy stitching all the way back down. Um, and it kind of gives a, a nice effect too. So if you were doing more of a, almost looks like an exaggerated feather a little bit, then you're gonna decide where you're gonna put your, which registration line you're gonna use. If I use this one, a quarter inch is gonna put me way, you know, way down, down here before it touches this one. So I'm gonna move this one over and then it, we're gonna hit this one. Let's go back this way. So you gotta manage the drag with your Sometimes I watch, I don't know about you, but I watch videos and they're just speeding through there with these rulers and then I realize that they have sped up the tape speed. So, you know, when you sit down, it's not going to be like that. And I just, I just goofed up. I was thinking, I was on autopilot. That's okay, we can use it to our advantage. The other thing I don't have today is my super glide. And if that's something you don't have um, to put down on top of your so steady space, it really does make a difference. It just really cuts down on all the friction and the drag. Okay, so this time we're gonna move here. And this time, instead of going all the way around, are nice stitches. I'm working with a 770 today, Bernina 770. She's making some really nice all right so adjust my fabric a little bit and again see that's the beauty of having your needle down and we're we're always trying to mitigate that drag. different look all the way around and depending on the number of um, points you have on your grid you could make this part fuller or not quite as full uh, and either one would look nice okay I've left some space down here just to try some um, some different things so here's the heart that we were looking at before so what I've done is um, I've got registration lines every two inches because uh, we said earlier at the widest point, this curve is two inches wide. And then this point is determined by using um, the first line closest to the bottom. So I'm gonna use this as my reference. And I want to create that nice little shape we had before uh, or using the ruler that we had before, the curvy. Visibility is helpful. Now, there we go. So what I was looking for was this registration line that I drew, the perpendicular line, because I'm going to use that as my start and stop, and then I want this to be one quarter inch out. So that's going to put this about an eighth of an inch out. Does any of that make sense? And, you know, everybody has different ways of figuring things out. Uh, my husband swears I find the most difficult, but... 
to keep the angle the same and where they meet, that's what makes sense to me. You have to play and work with it and figure out what works for you. Okay, now the trick is we're going to turn it so that we do the other side first. And then we take it off and rotate it again. So this time, so I'm right there, and I'm about an eighth of an inch there. So that I can get that quarter inch there. And these will be about the same distance, hopefully, from that point. Raise our presser foot, take the template off, oops, clip those pesky threads, and now we're going to flip it over. So now the writing you, is backwards, but we, that's the way you got to have it. So while we're on this side, let's go ahead and do this one. So again, I'm going to line up line there. And I'm going to come down. Here. and one quarter inch there and I'm just kind of eyeballing where a quarter inch is running here and it looks like it's gonna match up pretty well okay I'm gonna adjust my hands side you might even want to put hand to grip on both sides of this ruler if you're going to be flipping it over. I, I don't have hand to grip on this side and I can tell. And so the tendency is to press down too hard and then that creates drag. So it becomes self-defeating then to do that. All right and then we do the other side. So I'm looking here, quarter inch there, and it looks like it's going to be hitting about right. I don't have handy grip. <laughs> If you wanted to, I've got a little registration line there. Remember curvy, 
He was the first guy we used in this series. Then you could go put your needle back down. And then you're gonna bring him in and I'm gonna put my 90 degree mark at this angle. This way. Oops. And then that way. something to fill in between and you could use your ruler then to echo that or use your foot to echo that so quarter inch out and back in and then down and back in that would be a nice nice border design it's really cute There are some more things we're going to use part of the template uh, to make different designs. We, meant, we talked about a border and we talked about using just part of it. So let's move over to the, um, the long arm, the stand up, and uh, we'll explore some more. But regardless of whether you're moving the paper or moving the pen, like on the long arm, um, the ideas are the same and the stitch path is the same. It's just which part you're moving. So um, join us over at the long arm and we'll stitch out a couple more designs. So we're at the uh, Amara now and I did not draw this one out um, first. So we're just going to go for it because I, I thought it was a, a neat idea. So I've got what I have here is a 12 point uh, grid. Okay. And I'm going to put a four inch circle. If you don't have a set of circles in your um, toolbox, I encourage you to get one. Um, so they come in sets or they, I think, I don't know if you can get them individually or not, but Patchwork here has them and I would encourage you to explore that. All right. Now on the Amara, you have this nifty little tie-off guy. So I'm going to move my tool over and it ties it off for us. Handy dandy. I guess there's a reason they call it handy quilter. Okay, here we go, all the way around. And again, hugging that outside. As we come around, the tendency, we wanna go straight. So you, you really gotta kinda hug the outside of that template. And again, I'm in needle down because when you work with rulers, it'll just save you a lot of aggravation later. And around. Okay, now I'm gonna stop and again, gotta get twirly around here. So I'm going to, I've got my needle down, but I'm gonna um, lift my foot up. And this time we've got to go this way. going to put my needle back down so I can then use both hands. Using these um, 12 point grid around, we are going to stitch out some of these. Maybe for now, since we're kind of, we'll stitch here. And I'm going to reach up here. come around and in and back out all right I'm gonna leave this 
in as I travel to the next one. Um, this actually will help limit how much the machine will move. And so it kind of gives you a good way to backtrack. It kind of keeps you right on track having that channel there. All right, so there's the next one. and I'm kind of walking my fingers around a little bit to keep that template nice and flat because you don't want it jumping up on you. Back around. And back. And then travel. Check these. Come back around to give you a different look. Okay. Get that out of the way. So it gives you a different idea. I, and if you were to shorten these, um, um, I don't know be a fun sun then you could come inside and do free motion or even use a different template for a circle inside circles pebbles whatever um, I did think it would be kind of fun to make a face and then if you pulled the curl down this way you'd have hair <laughs> and pile it up a little bit so uh, just some ideas so let's lift up now the idea is Put my needle back down. The idea is that you're going to come up and you can use any portion of this curve and then you're going to slightly tilt it as you come back down to get that flame like look. And I'm going to work right now toward keeping this one, um, let's see, perpendicular. Let's go to the middle one. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna come about to the top to that midline there. But instead of tracking back down, I'm gonna shift my ruler and play around with how much. So what I'm using is this registration line to line up with my last stitching. And that's gonna throw me out here about a half inch. Okay, now to get that other point, I'm going to move it this way. Come up, and I'm not going to go as far, and then come back around this way. And again, um, you could play with it, shorten it. Um, could make waves. Could make waves, could make fire, could make um, wind, uh, claws, like a bear or something. I don't know. All kinds of ideas. Okay, lift the needle. Put it down, needle down. So now let's think about using part of the template. Um, And I don't have painter's tape on here, so I'm going to use 
this etching line as what I'm lining up with. Let's say this is your seam line or your midline uh, that you're going to be stitching. So come around here. Round and come down and stop. Okay, the downside to this design is now I have to take the template off and flip it over. I'll put my needle back down and then come this way. And it was this line I used, wasn't it? That's why painter's tape is a good idea. Because, <laughs> you know, memory, even short term. Oops. And there again, I do not have uh, hand to grip on, and it does make a world of difference. And what I would do here, if it were me, I would use this edge. Especially if this was a seam, you could travel in the ditch and come over to where your next one would be. Which I'm thinking you guys may think you've seen enough, but I think I know you really want to see if I can hit that mark. So let's see if I can. Okay, so I'm looking quarter inch there. So, you can see that this one has possibilities, and with practice, oh, that word, um, you'll get more and more familiar with how it's laid out and how you're moving it, um, how you're tilting it to get different looks and different designs. Um, so, Twirly, we're glad to meet you and glad to have you as part of our club. So. Hopefully you'll have fun with it and let me know what you come up with. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.